while working on this particular hairstyle I decided to record the entire process to kind of show you guys how I created it since it was quite fun but it took about uh, one hour for me to record it and it was quite unrealistic for me to give a voice over since most of the process was quite repetitive so I wanted to make it quite short and so it's more enjoyable we'll be watching I will do a very quick tutorial on how basically the steps and then I can play the speed making of that you guys can also enjoy to watch the process the process of creating this fall was created using Hairbrick which is a paid add-on I created that makes creating hair in geometry node quite fun so uh, if you want to check it out you can check it out um, though as, as we're using it you're also going to learn a uh, lot of stuff while using geometry node because it's well integrated with blender uh, so you'll be learning a lot even if you don't have access to the add-on yeah, we have our character model that we use to demo the full creation process. When working with geometry node, the very first thing you want to make sure you check is to see if your object has a very good UV mapping because the head surface default modifier with geometry node works is on the UV of your object. So let's go ahead and check that. At this right corner, we'll, we'll drag out a new window and I'm going to press shift F then to switch to the UV editor and now we can select this object and go right into edit mode in the edit mode of this particular model it's using a UV tile texture since it's the default that comes with the model this um, demo model provided by the blender foundation so using UV maps with geometry node uh, hair system currently doesn't work because it basically doesn't support it so we have to make it into a more traditional UV map where it fits into one box. To do that easily, we can just select everything, go to UV, and we want to search for Park Islands. So you click on Park Island and hit OK. And it's going to pack all the islands into one box as intended. If you're working a project where your object already has a UV map, um, ideally you're all set. But if you don't want to destroy this, you can always duplicate your UV and use one for your um, texture process and one for your grooming process. Okay, so we have our UV map so we can close this window and get started with the process. Hairbrick is, um, if you have Hairbrick already or intending to buy it, I just released a new major update to Hairbrick. Um, it's the 2.4 version I'm going to make a more specialized video to kind of show that uh, but it comes with lots of new features and that is uh, one of those features is support for vertex group so previously you could only mask out regions using images but um, like the old system which was a great inspiration for this hairbrick add-on it now supports vertex group so I'm going to create a vertex group and call this arm um, underscore r or we could actually use um, just assign both arms so we can see the influence if we go into the weight paint and we can see how it's influencing it so I want to make sure um, no other part is selected because it looks like we have some unwanted parts painted right okay so we're good we just want the particular section we want to add the four so we highlight it in red you can come here and smooth it out to kind of create like a blending effect. Okay. Let's go ahead and call this arm and we can click on generate hair. Once you generate the hair, it's going to generate it in the entire body. So we need a way to kind of isolate certain regions. So if you come down in the new update, you can click on enable vertex group and we can select the arm vertex group we created. You could actually create new vertex group right here by just clicking this brush icon. You should be familiar with this if you used it in the previous version where we had this feature for the image, but now we have it for vertex group. And you can either create a new vertex group or just use existing ones. Okay, um, now we can adjust the size of the, the the length of the strands. And let's play with the viewport set. I'm going to set this to 0 0.01. Uh, let's increase the density slightly 
I will also reduce the length to 0 0.01 or 0 0.015. Okay, so we are good now and we can click on apply. So you need to apply this to be able to go into the sculpt mode and start grooming. Also, um, you could use Blender collision but for some time uh, for some situation it, it tends to give some issue um, if you have that issue you can just click on collision and it should fix it so we automatically input um, collision data and you can add multiple collision for different objects to influence it so this is kind of like a la new layout um, and preparation for adding physics to the Hebrick system in the coming future okay so once you have this set up um, rather than going in and using the sculpts to kind of comb everything down to make it uh, make it work like it's for like the old school method, uh, which some part might be e uneven uh, because we are humans and we could make mistakes. Hebrick now has a new modifier called um, Curve Guide. So I'm going to hide this arm and go ahead and add a simple Bezier curve. I will delete it and bring out the tool and select draw. So I will switch it from cursor to surface because currently if we do click on it, we can see it, it doesn't snap on the surface. So we'll switch it to surface. And I will also switch on absolute offset. And for the offset, I'm gonna choose 0 0.01. So when we click on it, it should be placed on the surface of the object. So what we are going to do with this now is to just draw how we want the four to flow. In the, uh, for the character, so something like this. So let's say we want at this point it comes this way. Probably the offset is too much, so we can reduce the offset size to 0 0.05. So we'll do that again. So you can really act direct the flow of the four, and you probably never need to. Um, groom using this particular workflow. You can choose to add minimum for uh, minimum curve or as much as you want to really guide it. Okay, so once we have that set up, we can select the object, or you can click here to select the four or select it individually, and we can go to the modifier. In the modifier, we go to operation, and you see a new modifier has been added. It's called follow curve. So we click on follow curve. Um, it's going to now Hebrick automatically imports the mesh for you. So um, a new update. Uh, like I said, I'm going to make a more uh, specialized video for this particular feature um, or the new features you'll be getting on Hebrick. So now we need to select the guide curve. So we'll basically just select the guide curve we created. And there you go. And we can play with some parameters to make it really sit on the object. So if you reduce this length to 0 0.01, it's going to closely follow the flow of the curve which we drew. As you can see, it's really following it. Um, I'm going to reduce the, I'm going to taper the, the edge, edge of the strand and let's go ahead and add some children hair. So we use an interpolated for this and we'll enable vertex script and let's select the right vertex script. Let's set this to like 50, oh, probably to 100. And there you go. Uh, we, you also notice that the, we don't, it only applied it in one part of the arm. So what we can do is to quickly um, use the mirror modifier to mirror that four. And since you cannot apply modifiers on curve, you get an error. What we would do is to go convert curve to mesh. So it applies it now, and we can convert uh, mesh to curve. Let's enter the origin. And as you can see, the both arms are now following it. So it even works on finer details like the fingers, um, which is usually the toughest part when grooming. And it also works on the face, which you'll be seeing in a bit. 
I'll add collision to make sure no core is penetrating. And to kind of bring it all together, we can add a simple freeze and set it to 0.2. To we'll kind of just give it that flow feeling from 0.3. So depending on the type of uh, for you're trying to create, you can really customize things. Let's add clump and reduce the guidance distance 0 0.02 or 0 0.04. And you can just keep building and stuff. You have mask to kind of isolate where you want it to affect or where you don't want it to affect. Uh, we can probably bring it all together with. Um, some fray hair and there we go so when using this follow curve the great thing about um, the way it's set up for hair break is you can actually um, select the select this um, um, curve and we can go to we can actually apply this follow curve so once we apply that, it still retains the shape and nothing changes. Um, it's just applied. So if we disable all of this, we can go into the scope mode and now more artistically control certain parts. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's the entire process and the video plainness is the entire process of, of how I created the character which you saw in the beginning. So let's um, enjoy. <laughs> and yeah, so bye bye. I, I think this will be bye bye. And also, if you're interested in this particular product, the link will be in the description. And yeah, don't forget to get your own copy. So bye bye. I enjoyed the video.